Welcome back to another episode of Producer Grind Podcast. Karen Tina JB with me. Yo. Yo. Quay Globe in the building. What's good, What's bro? What's going on? I'm happy to be here, man. Already, bro. Appreciate you pulling up, bro. For sure. This, this, is a, this is a podcast I've been, I've been wanting to get in for a minute. Um, because I feel like, you know, your story as a producer is kind of like that ideal story, like for a producer come up. Like I feel like a lot of producers at home, you know, when they think about, you know, themselves coming up or imagine it, you know what I mean? They I feel like it's real similar to like what 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 happened with you, like because like from the outside looking in, it looks like, you know, you were like regular, regular producer on the come up, working around, moving around. You're from Atlanta, right? Yeah, I'm from Atlanta. I'm actually from the east side of Atlanta. Okay. Um, I kind of, I want to say like, grew up in it. Like my granddad used to do the music and shit. So I grew up making music. I grew up like in the <clears throat> church, but I didn't play actually in the church. I just got dang, go after the services. And that's around mm-hmm. type shit. Mm-hmm. What kind of music was your granddad into? Um, my granddad he was into like jazz music, mm. but he used to just play the saxophone, the piano a little bit every year. I used to go out there. He used to just teach me a couple of notes every time I went out there. Every year I used to go out there like every summer. Were you, was it something you were like interested into, or was it just like oh this grand my grandpa showing me something like? Nah, see the thing is, he died right before like I grew up and. Could realize what I was doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He died. So, like, right before he died, he, he had like a little deal. He was finna blow up. He was finna sign the RCR. Mm. I can't remember the name right now at the moment, but I'll get that to y'all for sure. Yeah. So, like, when you when you started your taking, like, when you decided to go in your music career, was it like kind of like living through or like kind of following up what he was doing or following his footsteps? <clears throat> um. Yeah, I kind of wanted to make it. And then, plus, my family was kind of poor, like, mm-hmm. coming up. So that kind of inspired me to do the music thing a lot more. Mm-hmm. So how serious were you taking music back then when you were, you know what I'm saying, taking the piano lessons and stuff like that? Um, I ain't taking no piano lessons. I don't really, I know how to play, but I just know, like, you know what, I know how to play. Like, mm-hmm. It ain't like, I just can read notes and shit. I can't do that. But yeah. I definitely can, you know, hear what you hear. But how old were you when you were playing with the piano and stuff like that? Oh, like, now, mm. coming out like nine years old. Mm. Okay. How old were you when you first finally like opened FL Studio? About thirteen. Uh, my uncle kind of introduced it to me. They used to do music and shit. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was making beats. Nah, he ain't made beats. His partner made beats. Mm. I used to look up to his partner. Mm. They used to be doing that little music shit. Like back in the day, like in Atlanta, it used to be like underground music. Mm. She used to be hard back then. Like what time period are we talking about? <clears throat> like 2009 to 2010. That's the time we talking about back back around in now. Mm-hmm. When you first started making beats, were you always like, like you know, like when you first start making beats, it's kind of just like messing around for a little bit. What like what point were you like, all right, let me let me let me actually start like kind right, of so more serious. When I used to make beats, my mom used to call that shit noise. Like <laughs> she used to be like cut that noise down. I used to be like. <laughs> this shit ain't no noise Like you call them mm-hmm. my beats noise Like I used to really Take that shit to heart Like my mama used to be Saying that shit, shit. Man. So like <laughs> Like my uncle He used to do music Like I said And Like me and my uncle God damn We used to God damn Cook up I used to make the beat From scratch He used to just have His vocals And he used to just Be singing You know you can not sing But mm-hmm. back then I used to think They were rapping and singing mm-hmm. Yeah He used to think He could sing So God damn, I ran with that And I learned melodies and shit just off his voice type shit. Mm. Like off the tone mm. in his voice. Like I just learned how to make beats. Mm. How did your mom feel about you being like wanting a music career versus was she telling you to go to like school yeah. and stuff like that? Or like I mean, my I feel like my grandparents was more big on go to school. I used to I would tell them like I ain't going to school. Like that ain't what I'm doing. Like, period. Like, I ain't going. Cause you, you knew the music shit? Yeah, because I always knew, like, mm. I was going to be successful in the music. I always knew it was a talent. Mm. So, like, why were your grandparents saying go to school when your grandpa, was he, he was in music industry, right? Like, he was doing stuff for music. So, when he, like, he was okay, encouraging Okay, okay. So, I used to go to Chicago every summer. Mm-hmm. My granddad, um, his name was Bruce, got down. That's, he, he stayed in Chicago. That mm-hmm. was my mama, dad. Mm-hmm. Okay, my my dad dad was like the deacon at the church. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> he 
he was a deacon at the church, so that's how I was at the church plan, because he was a deacon at the church. Mm. And that's the granddad that was telling you to go to school and stuff? Yeah, that's God. the granddad, like, yeah, go take your ass to school. Boy. <laughs> what did they say now, though, now that you're successful in it, though? Um, it's nothing to say. What you gonna say? It's really nothing to say. <laughs> you gonna, you gonna go back and get your degree? You gonna go yeah. back yeah. and get your degree? They, they say that then. Right. Like, it's like, they really say shit. that? Shit. Mm. They gonna yeah. always say that, right? Yeah. Right. They gonna always say they that. They gonna stick to it. You know, you know, back then is back then and now is now. Right. Yeah. Right. Like back then it's kind of like, like when you got your degree, that's like, okay, your life is together. Like you kind of, right. you getting your stuff together, but it's like a whole different generation. Now. Yeah, it's a whole nother ball game. And I knew, I always knew that I always had it in my head. Like it's going to be a whole nother, whole nother thing going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So it's almost like they're more comfortable. If you were, if you were locked into it, you had a degree locked into a job making like 30K a year. They would be they comfortable would with that. They would more secure with yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> they would be more secure, but it's like, I guess so, it's so, you know, you can get it, you can lose it. Right, get it back again. Yeah, right. So what were what were you doing to make money like before? You know, you had. Oh, I was recording. I was recording at my um my mama's house. She used mm-hmm. to be mad as hell. You I was young as hell through? though. Yeah, I was young as hell recording. I used to recording for like fifteen dollars a song, twenty dollars a song. Mm-hmm. Damn. But it used to work though. Mm-hmm. Like that was like I used to meet everybody out of that shit. Like, mm-hmm. It wasn't nobody I wouldn't run across off doing mm-hmm. the fifteen twenty dollars a song. Right, the whole hood. The whole hood, like, why wow, we gotta go, we gotta go to the house, gotta go to Quay House. Probably I'm at school, busy. gotta go to Quay House. Mm. Like, that's just how I did it. Like, I was young, like, getting a little money. Like, I sold my first beat for like $25. Hype as hell. <laughs> 25 dollars I swear, I, right. I never looked back after that. Like, it went from 25 to 50 to 125 Like, I still got the PayPal, like, it was in my PayPal because I was just doing a little <clears throat> internet shit. <clears throat> oh, these are online? Nah, it's it's online, but it's like it's people I know. Oh, yeah. okay. But they just send it. You feel me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you were recording people, were you like letting them record all your beats for free or were you really always trying to make money when it someone wanted your beats? Free beats. Give me that $20 for that song. Because mm. it was like, it was more of right now than later on. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Can't be thinking about Later on, I'm thinking about right now because right. I was fucked up, like we were broke. So, yeah, you know what I was thinking about, like, shit, I gotta get, I gotta make some money some way. Shit. Right. Now, a lot of people say that, that mindset can hold you back. What do you think about that? You say what? A lot of people, like we interview, say like that that mindset can hold you back, like worrying about like right now. Oh, I need this right now. Fuck, you know the future. I mean, not you. not not when you trying to get some money. We ain't talking about when you trying to have a music career. We talking mm-hmm. about you trying to get some money. Mm. <laughs> so when so when did that when did that switch? Um, I always had a passion for music. Like it never switched. I ain't saying like I got I ain't, I ain't got no passion for music. I'm saying at that time I was broke and I needed to get the money, so I just did what I had to do. And that was right. your skill set. You know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah. So, so at what point did you start recording at like big studios and you know what I'm saying? Have a situation <sighs> that that could change your life. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, so I'm gonna tell you how this story. So I graduated from high school. So I was doing a little recording shit. My mom was like, You gotta do something like twenty dollars ain't gonna got down, fifteen dollars or something gonna do it, and they coming in my house. Right, right. Like, yeah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> that ain't gonna do it. So um What 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 you was what you was saying again? That shit just threw me out. Which what, what I asked you was saying? He asked you when did you start? Like, when, yeah, when did you start? I was my big break, so yeah. I was telling the story. So goddamn, I um, my mom was like you gotta get a job, so I got this job at this truck wash called um Blue Beacon. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> goddamn, six months in that, um, I quit. Same day I quit. Same night I'm in the studio with Gucci. Mm-hmm. So I met, I got there through. My friend, um, Lala Shep. Oh, yeah, shout out to Lala. You know Lala? Oh, yeah, don't yeah. do manager. Yeah, Lala got down. She got down, put that shit together for me. So, um, so we get there. I'm speeding because I'm late. Like, I'm late. It's traffic. Y'all got to realize in the city, I stay, I, I, back then I used to stay out in like, fucking by Stockbridge and shit. Dang. Like, and then Golly. So I was going to the waiting. city. They were like, can you get here in 30 minutes? So I'm like, Hell that's a 50-minute nah. drive. I get that, though. In 30 minutes? Yeah, I get that, though. I ain't never, um, 
I ain't never been to like the city for real, for real. Like, yeah. For real, never been to the city for real. So I get there, I see them. Oh, cool, bam. It's crazy because the video still on YouTube. Like when I first walked in, uh, for real? yeah, it's on YouTube. Right, like, like, yeah. So I walked in there. Uh, um, uh, what was it? You walked in at the studio where you just go. No, no, no. I had pulled up. I had mm -hmm. just got there. Uh -huh. So I walked in through the gate. Um, this was Hot Beats. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know the old Hot Beats? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fusion yeah. So we walked in Hot Beats. We went in there. Um, it took Gucci like for like 20 minutes to get there. It was the first time I ever met Gucci. Like that was the first time I ever met, met him. So when I played my beats, he was like, who beats them in? I like, them my beats. He was like, them beat hard. And he was like, shit, got down, get his number like So I got down, he got my number. I want to say like two, three months go by. He ain't even got down. I ain't even get no follow back. Mm. But the whole time, I'm thinking like, I got to get money now. Mm -hmm. So like when I go in there, I ain't even stun Gucci for real. Like I'm stunning him. But I ain't need to stun him. So I straight go to the front desk and I just asked him, like, y'all hiring? Like, is y'all hiring? But I use Gucci face card to, like, get the job. Mm -hmm. So now I'm 18 and everybody at the studio older than me. So they like, damn, like, how you get in here, bro? You look younger in here. Like, I'm 18. You were it, engineering? It, yes, I was engineering. Like, it was people older than me interning up there. Mm -hmm. I was, I was the young. Hobbies. Yeah, I was young, like. Damn. Young dude. Young. So you started out like with a job or you were interning for? I was never interning. Oh, you mm -hmm. just straight had a job? I straight jumped. That's crazy. So using I used the fake card. Same studio Alex was working at. Yeah, but I, I ain't never see Alex. Mm -hmm. I ain't never he won that at this time. I feel like this is the time studio, the studio is kinda like On the way down. Yeah, on the way down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So what what do you what what's your relationship with Lala? Why did she even call you right, right. she Okay, so I used to be signed to this label um, called Big Dog Entertainment. Okay. And I met Lala through the label I used to be signed to. Mm -hmm. And I, me and Lala just always kept our relationship. And she used to always used to just hit me up, mm -hmm. just out of the blue. Because so, she knew you were the fire engineer? Yeah, yeah, she knew I just had a talent. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So she took that and just, you know, embraced it and helped me grow with it. So how did the situation to, with Big Dog come about? Um... I was just in high school, like that's that's I I really I really slick. Don't even remember how that happened. Like I think I had went to um yeah, I think I think um okay, so I met them. I want to say at Street Is It's like when Street Is It's first had they look like when they first came out. I met them at Street Is It's and um. Jay Pizzle, like the owner who owned it, he got there and just reached out to me and was like, I want to have you on my label. Mm -hmm. I was like 16 back then, They're 16, like, 17. <laughs> <laughs> I was in high school, packed up though. Like, I had fun. Like, I had my rap career. Like, I literally, like, had the whole rap run. Like, it was a good run. It just, we never, like, looked into, like, the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. you know oh, you were saying? signed as an artist? Yeah, I was signed as an artist. Oh, it wasn't okay. even mm -hmm. no production. Mm -hmm. Like, most like most people my age, like, they know me as a rapper. They don't even know me as a producer. Mm -hmm. Everybody like else just know me as a producer. Like, people around the way know me as a producer, rapper. Mm. Got you, got you. Uh, okay, so you were signed, right, as an artist. Why did you, like, what changed where you was like, okay, let me take the route of just going beats? Right. It wasn't working. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't working. It like years at it and it's not working. So mm -hmm. I took what I knew it worked and ran with it. Mm, like the engineering and the yeah. producing. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it a lot more work to come out as an artist? Uh yeah. It definitely is. Um now in this time, hell yeah. I feel like you gotta have a lot more of a um engine, a um a back. Mm. Like a whole team behind it. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have, you gotta definitely gotta have a situation going on. Yeah, because I wanted to ask, because I know last year you dropped a single, uh, was it called Not Sense or something like that? No Sense. No Sense, no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, No Sense. Um, and I dropped another one called um, uh, Wait. It was called Wait. Mm. Quay Wait. Q U A Y. Wait. 
Mm-hmm. And now, what, what's your mindset putting them out? Are you just having fun um, with it? Are you really trying to? Get- nah, I really used to like try to like used to go for singles. Like I was always the single person. Mm-hmm. Like I used to always make myself like create singles. Then I like before I left Bit Dog. Like I had albums, mm-hmm. like three of them. Like I didn't. I never went through with them. Like mm-hmm. it never went through. I always had the vision, the dream. It just never. That shit never came across. It never went through what it was supposed to do. Mm. And then now in one of your interviews, I know you were saying that right before you met Little Baby, you were actually working with Bricks the Man. Yeah, I was working with Bricks the Man. Um, he kind of um, he kind of helped me too, like, because I ain't had no money. Like, he, he would help me get some money too back then. Um. On the engineer side? Or? Yeah, on the engineer side. I met Bricks through a uh, bit down the label. Also. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So it seemed like you actually got some good relationships. Yeah, right? I got some, I got, I definitely got <clears throat> some good relationships. Um, Bricks kind of just, like, I was kind of like working for Bricks. Like, Bricks was paying me to, you know, record sessions and stuff. He At just, his studio? No, no, no. We used to just, he used to have, he used to just have his plays. And we used mm. to just, Go from there. I realized he was he a big producer, so he used to just put it together, and I used to just work for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. talk about like how you set up you and baby meeting. Um. So it was just a, I used to always be at Big Dog Studios because they they did have a studio in the city, so I used to always be at their studio. I used to run it. So um, I want to say like we. What'd you say? I was asking, like, talk about, like, how he said, like, how you ended up meeting Baby through Briggs. Oh. Um, about engineering. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, we just kept that relationship. So, mm-hmm. me having that relationship with him, he just, he knew I was a go-to and he knew I was good with beats. Mm-hmm. So, he used to just call me and he used to just put me on the money to, I guess, because he didn't feel like doing it. Mm-hmm. He used to just call me like, bro, God damn, help me out. I used to just help him. And mm-hmm. he went from there. Yeah, because he even said in our interview, like, that was a time period where he was kind of late. He was being lazy at the time. Yeah, like, he wasn't <laughs> late. Like, he he was really like, bro, you do that shit. Like, yeah. just give me, I got you. Yeah, he was just helping me out do that shit. Definitely ended up working out for your favor. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely helped me. Definitely. Mm. And then y'all made my dog, like, the first night linking up, right? That's what you Yeah, mean? yeah. Like, the first night we linked. Like, the first night we did that shit, we made, yeah, that shit went crazy, too. It was at QC that y'all. Yeah, mm, yeah. So was it? Was it, were you were you are were you already kind of like not stunt shit, or were you when you're like, oh shit, I'm at QC, you this know could be big. Crazy, like I was never stunted the whole time because I don't went through it so much. Like I went through the uh, being here and not going nowhere so much. Yeah. Like I that one my I wasn't stunted. Like, mm. That's crazy because, like you said, growing up in the A. You can realize like you can run into a lot of cap situations or like you feel like your life's about to change and it doesn't. Yeah. <clears throat> but I feel like from people that aren't in Atlanta, they're like, yo, all I need is that one shot to right. be at the studio. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let me just walk in the street execs and I know it's so I'm I'm on. Yeah. Like, nah, it ain't like that. Right. Cause they gonna look at you crazy because they don't even know who you is. Right. Like, ain't like that. Mm. So the song comes out. How long does it take before your life changes after that song came out? I said about, it took about a year for everything to just shape and, you know, become, you know, good. Because, you know, at first you got to fix your life. Like, you got to fix everything around you and you got to fix your life. So it's like, yeah. I what do you mean? Like, so? fix it. Like, what you mean? Like, your family, your friends, just, you know, you might have, like, business ideas you might jump into and you now don't work. Like, mm. just mm. all over. Like like bad investments type shit. Yeah. <laughs> what you trying to do? Flip cars or something? Flip houses? What you trying to do? All that. Like everything. Like it just you know it just been a it just been a long run. Like I'm just an entrepreneur like all over. So mm. name, name just, a few things that you investing into. Um, right now, um, I got a food truck. I um work with the crack house. Yeah, I've heard of the crack yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, the grapes and shit. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. For sure. We um definitely, you know, that's like family. You know, we got um a lot going with the crack house. Um, um I got also got a restaurant, the crack house restaurant, that's coming soon too. 
Um, um, what else we got? I know in your IG you had something about for partnerships call or you said partnerships or something in your IG bio. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I um partnered up with um. Um, Kasai, that's my um brand strategist. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we got them. We um reaching out to get partnerships. Um, that's about it with that. Do you feel like? Do you ever like run into moments where you pursuing these business ideas that it takes away from the music? Mm. Um, no, cause it, it kind of got something to do with the music. I feel like music and food go together, so. Mm. I felt like it kind of got something to do with the music. But you know, you got to put a lot of hours, like running, opening a restaurant and stuff, it takes like a lot of energy. Yeah, that's what. It, that's why you got a team though. Oh, okay. That's why it ain't just, you know, it ain't just me. I mm-hmm. got a whole team. Like I, I had to hire my own team. Like I pay my my whole own staff. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You have any producers on you? Yeah. Um, We got um DMC Global. I got um, um Benji. Um... And you know it's a it's a lot more coming, but you know we still working on like signing producers and you know getting out getting everything together. Mm-hmm. Like, we, do you look for like melody guys or like? Who? Um, yeah, I look for melody guys, but some melody guys they I I don't get along with them. <laughs> right, so. Cause they I don't know they be trying to act like they be in the room with me. Like, hey, y'all not in the room with me, so I feel like they shouldn't get a uh, such. A percentage when you're not in the room with me. Mm. It's the that's difference the when you here and you 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 there. Mm. You, talking you about don't like think a, you don't think it's a difference from you when you like, in there? Are you saying like uh, when you making the beat in the studio with the artist, like it's a difference? Or are you saying just nah, like, just when you make like collab, yeah. like collab, you know, yeah, same like thing we've been say, talking say about you, with everybody. Yeah. Like say right, a producer yeah. send you a loop, right? Like that, like producer send you a loop, mm-hmm. you do the sound, boom. They want a whole. 50% or mm-hmm. 30% and they ain't need that number. You see what I'm saying? I feel you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't so know. So some, some loop guys, I just, we don't get along. Mm. And I just <laughs> think it's like, I think it's like a matter of like, if somebody sent like a melody and you add like 15 tracks on top <laughs> of it, then, you know what I'm saying? Of course, it's like, yo. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I should do more. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like, it really depends on how much they did. Right. Yeah, like, it, it, it really got to be, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it really right. got to be something. But I forget yeah. who said it. Um, one of the podcasts we said, they said regardless of what happens, they just bust it down 50-50. Yeah, just that's how a lot of people feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's probably, like, the safest route to take. Yeah, just bust it but, down 50-50. But, but I feel like if it, you got to realize it's different when it's chords and, like, a melody in the beat. When it's just... Uh, it's like a one, I want to say like a one shot, like, like it's a one shot, one shot melody. Like I probably could have made the melody. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's just like a little idea. Yeah. It's just something just. Yeah. But when you run off with the idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I could definitely, I definitely see how you, then like you want to Of course, 50, yeah. 50. Yeah. If you with me, yeah. Right. But if you not, if you not in the room like that, you got to think about that. Like. Mm. The relationships. Yeah. The relationship. like, and, and I just met you. Like yeah, like you can't just get this put is, on. I built you. You telling me I built this whole brand for you mm-hmm. to just be like, come in and get fifty percent. Right. No, <laughs> not I, mean, possible. I, see, I see that perspective. Too. Not, not possible, possible bro. bro my, not possible. My way of looking at it goes back and forth. I haven't really made an exact decision. <laughs> <on how it's laughs> <right. I'm> like, <laughs> nah, for real. But I mean, I think it's like it's a different layer too when it's like when you're playing on a higher scale, like major placements and stuff. Then like when the money's up there, it's like. I can understand how someone's like, bro, I just built, spent 10 years of my life building this career. Then you send a loop and then now you're going to get 50% of this major radio hit. I can understand right. that too. But then I can also understand like, yo, it's 50% of the song. Like I did this and you did this. Let's just break it down 50-50. But sometimes that's not all that goes into it. It's a lot more. Yeah, man. Shit, that's just being honest though. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was just, I'm just being truthful. You know, right. I mean, yeah. That's a whole, that's like a whole... Yeah, and a whole another topic yeah. to go into. Right, yeah, right. right. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, I was looking on, on like, I was going through your playlist that you got on Spotify and stuff and looking at, you know, some of the bigger songs and pulling up the credits. And it seems, you, you're the only one that's getting produced credits, so does that mean most of your placements are all you? No, no. 
All my everybody who I've ever made a beat with, I put them in the in the credits, in the credentials, every time. Mm. I tell my lawyer, make sure, make sure you do that. Mm. Everything, all the way around. No, I was saying, are there any are there any of your major placements that were just you? Oh, um, all mo- majority of my placements were just me. Mm. Majority of them, but um, like my last placement, um. I did one with Ghost Rage. Like, man, Ghost Rage been working a lot. Mm. Um, um, it's been a couple, you know, couple, but not not a lot. Like, it's been like two or three songs, mm. not too many. How do you feel about collaborating with other big producers? Because it's not something I really see you doing too much of. Um, I do. I collab with other big producers. It just be like somehow we never just it never go out. Like, but I do like know a lot of big producers. Like, yeah. I work with C No. I work with a lot of producers. Earl. OG Park, like it'd be a lot of producers I work with. It just it never it never get out. Mm. When you working with these other artists, like, do you prefer to do it like be in the studio with C Note, be in the studio with Earl, or have them like send you stuff? I'm not because I feel like we built the relationship. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Like we then we built the relationship. Like mm. I feel about it. I feel. So let's let's go back a little bit. So you said. After after my dog came out and everything, it was really about a year before your your life kind of changed, right? So what happened within that year? Um, man, a lot happened, bro. Like I had to, like really just catch myself because I was I was so young. Like I had to really just understand where I was at mm-hmm. in my career. You know what I'm saying? So it was, I just um I really it's like a lot of stuff I can say, but a lot of stuff I can't. So so I I want to say like I just went through a lot of stuff. And yeah, just building the team, getting everything together. Yeah, as a producer, like what what do you need a team for as a producer? Like when you were building a team, like what were you looking for? Like someone to handle paperwork, something. Yeah, like yeah. That. I needed um I was looking for somebody to really just, you know, take me serious and take my take my career serious. Um, I recently um just um got a new manager. Um, Rico Brooks. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my um. Uh, that's my new manager. Yeah, he manages a lot of a lot of big dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I I see what he do. I, I just you know, mm. I trust Rico. How did the situation with QC come about? Um, the situation with QC came about you know just cooking up with baby. I stayed cooking up with him. I was always with him, so you know they seen me with him all the time. So they're like, we might as well mm. duo. <laughs> yeah and then what, what was that moment like was that like a, oh shit my mm-hmm. life's about to change moment yeah that's exactly when I you know tightened up and really just really started really cooking up like I'm gonna really like make beats hard every day like no I stop in one of your interviews you said like once you get signed it's like kind of a different like uh pressure or a different level as a producer because it's like now they're asked they're like yo have more beats like you got the beats you have you have people contact yeah yeah, you, yeah. you definitely you definitely when you get signed you definitely gotta you know improve your work ethic mm. with the beats I ain't gonna call, I was making like I was making like um 10 beats like 10 beats every day like before I got signed mm-hmm. I feel like I kind of had got slower over the course of time and then like like when I caught a hit single like I it it come back like I feel I feel it like a a shock or something. <laughs> Is it was it ever a period of time where you got lazy? Um. Yeah, um. Yeah. Um. I want to say yeah because you get tired of like I want to say like people asking for the same stuff, asking for the same beat. Like everybody like. I want that beat, that beat, that same beat. They want the same drum, same everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I kind of got tired of it. So I kind of had to like start working with different artists and like, you know, shaping, reshaping my sound. Mm-hmm. And then what? What does that look like though? Like when you're when you're already on type shit. What you mean? Like how? Like like how do you reshape your sound once you already reach a high level? Like I'm, oh I'm oh dog. oh, how do I reshape the sound and get um, to that next level? Like. Um, I feel like like once you keep doing something over and over again, like you gonna get better at like mm-hmm. you it's gonna be something you're gonna be like, Oh yeah, I can I do that. So I just you just keep improving yourself. Mm-hmm. So that's I feel like that's how you just grow and you make better beats. Mm-hmm. When people are asking for like the same beat, 
and you told them no, were they uh, <laughs> were they hurt? I mean, you know, they'd probably be like, yeah, goddamn, we'll probably just call you, you feel me? Oh, uh, uh, next we'll get some beats from you next time we see you. Mm. Cause they gon' they they gon' want some more beats. <laughs> just a temper, like yeah, just temporary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a it's just a pause, like a, mm. a stop. So like, what are some like? Okay, so you're talking about reshaping your sound. What are some other like sounds? Like, are you di- hopping into different genres, trying to work with like some R and B, some pop, or maybe something else? Like, what are you? Um, stepping yeah, I um, I've been working with um Millie Millie Go Lightly. Mm-hmm. Um, she's kind of like poppy, so that's like something new for me but I definitely been working like on pop like as mm-hmm. a new genre um yeah that's about it I just, pop rap mm-hmm. pop rap and R&B mm-hmm. how do you feel about the music like 2019 music industry versus 2018 like I feel like last year was like <laughs> so many songs coming out so many hits and this year is like really like less turn like I don't know really seen y'all feel like that like the that's why it's the season quiet. yeah it's the, the season. summer really it's been quiet season. this is slow um I feel like it's so many producers that shaped the game last year. Like it was like, like they was like everybody was trying to sh- get their own. <laughs> everybody was trying to make their own. Shit. <laughs> but nah, they um, I I I really can't speak. It's really a whole new vibe for twenty um nineteen. Like it's more mellow. I feel like it's more. I feel like it's some missing. Like I don't know. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I feel like it. people just burned up. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they tired of yeah, it. People just burned up. That's it. Like, and then like the music, like now, like it be so simple. Mm. Like it just be that one bass. Yeah, yeah I don't be noticing that. It's, yeah, it's, it's burned up. It's one same. bass. Yeah, it be like, it it be be, like man. I feel like twenty twenty though. I feel like like it's like a swing right now. Like he said, people are burnt out from over here, so they're gonna start swinging over to this other side. Yeah. So I think twenty twenty is gonna be crazy. I feel like. All the artists are kind of like working on something. It's a know, lot of new thing. shit coming out in 22, though. Like, it's yeah. a lot of new PS5, <laughs> all that coming yeah, out yeah. in 2020. PS5 new shit. Yeah, yeah, hovering cars. Like, what? 2020? Oh, you said PS5, be... like PlayStation. I was yeah. like, PS5. I'm like, hmm, is that an artist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I see what you said. It is a whole new decade and shit. It's not even yeah, yeah. TV anymore. It's crazy. We're going to be flying cars. Yeah. Uber got, um, they got the, uh, what are they, the drones? Bro, they yeah. got drones. Like, they're going to pick you up like, from your hotel. That shit will take you, like, to, like, the event or wherever you're going to go. Put like, a strap what? on, like, a backpack. <laughs> that shit's crazy. Yeah, man. Man. Helicopters are great shit. Man, them folks got drones. That shit, that crazy. I know in, like, man. Italy, they got, um or, like, other countries, they got, like, Uber is more, like, for, like, like helicopters. Uber like, Air. Yeah, 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 like, helicopters yeah, or, like, that shit boats and stuff like that. It's more, like, luxurious. <laughs> that shit, that hell. Yeah. What's it? What does it feel like to wait on records? Like, because I know a lot of producers. I forget about them. Thing. You forget I about them. I do not sit down and dwell on no song. Because if you dwell on it, like you gonna it's gonna burn out eventually. Like you gonna burn it out. So I, I feel like I don't even need to keep listening to it. So I don't burn it out. So when it come out, I'm I'm with like I can I'm I'm hip. <laughs> Real. I know you got a couple songs out this year. Future and Lil Baby. Um, mm-hmm. All the mud just dropped. How long has that been on now? A couple months, month and a half? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it just came out. Just came yeah. out type shit, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I got um Yellow Beezy. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did um I did like four on his project. That's an interesting record to me, the Yellow Beezy one. Because it's all over the radio. Like, it feels like that song's really being pushed. Back at it again? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hitco definitely, definitely did their job with that song. It's like it's like different from a, like a my dog. Like my dog is like kind of like the streets will play it more, right. but organically just yeah, pick it up type shit. Yeah. It's like yo, like everyone rock with it. But while the yellow beezy one seems like you'll hear it more on the radio or you'll hear it more on like, right in yeah. the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Cut a different vibe. I didn't even think about yeah. the club because I don't be going to the club and shit. So. Yeah, you odd that every time you go to the club, you are gonna hear that song. Mm. Mm. For sure. Mm. Fact, that's fact. And then um, the control of the streets volume two. That should definitely. I'm definitely interested to hear what that sounds like. Yeah, I got um four I, on there. Yeah, I got four now. Um, what date? What 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 date? You know the date? Sixteenth, August sixteenth. Yeah, I got um I got four now also. Mm. Um, three of them, little baby, for sure. Mm-hmm. Do you have any plans of like trying to relaunch yourself as an artist, or is that you kind of just 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna jump back into it. I'm mm-hmm. definitely gonna jump back into the artist side. Um, I'm gonna just you know start writing first, and then you know we are gonna go from there. Is there any opportunity for you to get songwriter like start pursuing songwriter credits or start getting that lane? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely start working with um different artists and helping them create their sound. Also with the artist side, not just the production side. Mm. Definitely, I'm able to like help somebody create a sound. So I'm also, and I'm also curious about, okay, as a songwriter, how do you handle the business side as a songwriter versus, like, I can imagine being in a studio and you're helping someone with lyrics, right? Mm-hmm. Doing songwriter work. But then the artist could just say, nah, bro, you just helping me out. Like, you're not really going to get a percentage. Like, yeah. how does that work out if you've had experience with that? Um, I've never really too tough went through that. Mm-hmm. But um, in a situation, like, I wouldn't trip about it. I wouldn't. Cause it's probably my beat nine times out of ten, so mm. I'm I'm eating anyway. So I feel like it's just me helping you now. Right. Mm. Mm. And then we we can't we can't let you get out of here without talking about some technical stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's get the producer give questions. us your top three VST. Omnisphere, Contact, Electrax, <laughs> Electrax. Yeah. Yeah, Electrax. What about on no the C- F- no effects C- side? <laughs> effects. Um. Um, I use the fruity chorus. <laughs> mm. uh, Fat clean preset. Yeah. I'm trying crazy. to get y'all some sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the sauce going. Um, uh, chorus go crazy. What do you use the chorus? Like, okay, what, what what things would you put the chorus on that you wouldn't expect to put chorus on? What you mean? Like, do you put chorus on anything? Other than just instruments, like do you put a chorus on maybe like a hi hat or put chorus on a clap to add a different effect, or is it just a standard like I'm gonna put this chorus, the fruity chorus, on like a piano just to make it thicker? Um, like using things in an unorthodox way. Do you use any plugins in like an unorthodox way that people wouldn't oh, expect? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I use the fruity chorus on like a lead. Mm-hmm. I might use it on a lead. Might you? I might use a phaser, phaser too. But like yeah. I ain't gonna even like effect effects wise like cross beat mm-hmm. like I ain't really too much hitting them and fix like with the like if you hear effect it might be like it's out on, on the plug in already I ain't mm-hmm. <laughs> it's tweaking all <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but sometimes I might I might do a little tweak and might play with something, but I really don't be no knowing what I'm doing when I do that like, <laughs> yeah, it might just be like some I'm feeling curious today yeah right? for real <laughs> what about your master channel nothing nothing on the master. Nothing. Mm-hmm. When you leveling, are you leveling your beats quiet or loud? Uh, lower. Do you mix in mono? Stereo. Stereo. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Cool, man. Shout out, let everybody know where uh where to follow you if they don't know already. Oh yeah, y'all can follow me on Instagram at a s quay, Twitter quay global. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. They're my only two. Um. Oh, Spotify, Quake Global. Y'all seen that? Um, Audio Mac, Quake Global. Everything Quake Global, except for Instagram. So, Instagram, A D S Quake, A Y E T H A T S Q U A Y. Any albums or singles coming out? Um, Com- Like compilation type stuff? Yeah, the QC album. Coming. No, I'm saying you specifically. Oh, yeah, I got an album dropping. Um, well, I ain't gonna say dropping. I'm gonna say is I'm working on an album. It should be here by January, not January, February. But every every artist you could think of is probably on that album. That's fire, mm-hmm. definitely. Any new tags? Um, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna keep it cool and steady right now. I feel you. Right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Another dope episode in the books, man. Signing off. Peace, Peace y'all. Yo.